In our video today, we're going to be doing a couple of things within Amazon Web Services again. Step one, we're going to create an EC2 instance running a flavor of Unix. Step two, we will connect to that instance after it's created using SSH. And step three, we will apply the appropriate updates to that Unix image that we created to ensure uh, we have the, the latest security patches and other patches that may have been applied to that specific flavor of Unix that we're running. Now that we have our EC2 instance running Unix, the next step we want to go through is how do you connect to that? There's a good document that Amazon has out there. Amazon has just a ton of information related to AWS. And one of the specific ones they have is connecting to your Linux instance using SSH. And I'll leave a link to this in the description below if you're, uh, so you can access this. But this will walk you through exactly what you need to do to connect to your instance once it's been created. And if you just scroll down a little bit here, you'll see a section on connecting to your Linux instance. And what I'm walking through right now is using a MacBook and Macs have SSH capabilities built into it via the terminal program. And that's what I'll be using to access the server that we just created. But with that said, if you are using a Windows machine or a Unix machine or something like that, this will give you some additional information on uh, how you what you need to do to connect to it. So if you're not using a MacBook, you'll need to install an SSH client and this will uh, walk you through how you can go about doing that. And if I flip back over to our management console here, our EC2 dashboard, you'll see our server is in a running state and the status checks passed. And I, I mentioned that we have our IP address, but we also have a public DNS name right here, and that's what we are going to use to connect to our instance. And note, while the public IP address has dots, the public DNS has dashes. Big difference. If you put dots when you try to connect to it, it's not going to connect. So this tells you exactly what you need to uh, be able to SSH into your uh, Linux instance here. So let's just walk through uh, some of the steps here. Uh, first step's optional and you can you can verify the quote-unquote fingerprint of the uh, running instance by running a quick command. That'll allow you to validate that fingerprint when you're trying to connect to the server. So uh, you avoid a, um, it's called a man-in-the-middle attack. Given that I just created this, nobody's, nobody knows about it. I'm, I'm not going to go through this step here. And uh, step two tells you in a command line shell, change directories to the location of the private key file. And uh, well, let's just walk through things step by step. So what I wanna do here is I wanna launch a terminal, my terminal program. Let me bring this over so everybody can see it. And just blow it up a little bit. And if I go back to our documentation, it says the first thing we want to do is change directories to the location of my private key file. So this is the private key file we downloaded when we created the EC2 instance running Unix. In my case here, running a basic Unix command, I want to change directories to, uh, let's see here, users, users, Craig, downloads is where it's at and you can see we are now in the downloads folder and if I click back here so step two is completed step three use the change mod command to make sure that your private key file isn't publicly viewable what this is doing is changing the permissions on the 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 file that we created so this gives you the opportunity to copy these commands so you don't need to type them over so if we copy this and go back to our right terminal. And if I hit the, uh, just do a control V or a command V, you'll see it puts 
that command in here. And what we want to do is change our file name to test Unix server. This is what I called it when I downloaded it. And the path name is going to be our users Craig downloads folder that we're at here. Hit enter. So we just changed the permissions on that file. Let's go back to our documentation here. And in the fourth step is where we're, we will actually use the SSH command to connect to that instance. And it tells you exactly what you need to do. Uh, you'll need a username. And for you can see right here for Amazon Linux, the username is ec2-user. And it gives you the command down here. So again, we can copy this, go back to our terminal window, hit the command V to copy that. And we have to change a few things here. So the first thing we want to change is the public DNS name. So we have to change our, our IP address here to uh, match what we have over in our EC2 dashboard for our EC2 instance. So in our case, it is user, or it is EC2-34-201-33-188. So let's go back to our terminal window here and let's change some things. So it's EC2-34-201-33-188. Dash 188. I think that's right. 34, 201, 33, 188. 33, 188. Cool. And we have our EC2, so let's just validate it. So it's EC2 user at, and this is remember, if we go back to our documentation, EC2 user is our username. Actually, for Amazon Linux, EC2-user, same for Red Hat. So we have EC2-user, and here's our public address. We have to change our file name, which is test unix server.pem. And let's change the path name, same path name where we're at. So here's our command, ssh-i, our path, our pem file, and our username, and our IP that we're accessing with the dot compute dash one AmazonAWS.com, and let me get to the right place. And that's the name we're trying to access. Tracking so far? So hopefully if we typed everything right, it should work. Cool. And you can see here, this tells me that if you look up here, I previously logged into this before I started the video just to make sure everything works. And uh, if you go back to the documentation, there's one step that we bypassed here or that you did not see. You, you will get a, a message when you're connecting to it the first time that says this. And this is where I was telling you, you can validate the fingerprint of the file if you did the first step up here. So you can just compare things to make sure that you're truly connecting to that instance. If you type yes here, it will take you through and, and allow you to connect. That's, that's really it. We're, we're connected to our server. And from this, you can do various things. You can FTP files to it, move files around. Okay, and the last thing we wanna do is apply any updates to it. And I accidentally cleared my screen here, but I can show you uh, what you need to do and if you uh, 
go back a few seconds here, you can see the, the prompt that it, it had you do to apply any updates. And it's straightforward enough if you type sudo yum update, just like that, it will ensure you have the latest updates applied to that package. So it runs some checks, takes a look to see what you have compared to what uh, needs to be upgraded. And you can see down here below, gives you a quick little transaction summary. Uh, there'll be one package install, install one package, upgrade five packages, a total download size, ask you is this okay, type Y for yes, and it will go through and download the appropriate packages and upgrades that are out there for that Unix flavor that you're running to ensure that you have everything up, upgraded to the, uh, or updated to the current versions. And this is something that you'll want to do every once in a while to ensure that uh, you've got the latest patches and security updates. And you just need to give it a, a few seconds to do its thing. And it will tell you when you're completed. So it took, didn't take that long, less than 30 seconds to do everything. So those are the key things that I wanted to cover here. Three things to be specific. We created our EC2 instance in AWS with using uh, the Amazon uh, machine image for uh, Unix. We connected to it via our terminal application using SSH and we applied the updates. Check to see if there was any updates and apply those updates through the sudo yum update command.